Hello students. Today we are going to learn and understand some introductory concepts on amplifiers and feedback systems. We know that amplifiers are very important in our daily life because we use amplifiers at many levels. For example, if you want to watch television, you mostly you increase the signal strength by increasing the volume or you increase the brightness level or if you want to conduct a program we normally use a mic system right and that also the signal which you give to the microphone is getting amplified so basically it consists of an amplifier or you connect the microphone to an amplifier and or you sometimes use loudspeakers so these are these are all uh, places where amplification is done. So most of the electronic devices will have an amplifier inside that. So we know that it's quite important or it is very a common uh, thing, uh, the amplifiers. So now we are going to understand basically uh, functioning of an amplifier. Here I've shown the figure of a microphone connected to an amplifier. And you can see that a microphone connected to an amplifier, right? And you can see it is connected to an amplifier. Then you can see additionally, the amplifier is connected to a, uh, a DC source, a source, okay? And that is connected to the a loudspeaker or the ampli uh, a loudspeaker part. Now we can see that uh, from this figure, you can understand that for the functioning of an amplifier, first of all, we need a signal which has to be given to the amplifier. Okay. Then this amplifier in a, what amplifier actually amplifies the signal which you've given and it gives an output which is amplified output. Okay. That is um, the input has been amplified by the amplifier. That is it, its strength has been increased or you can say that its power has been increased. So what is basically happening in an amplification is it is increasing the power of the signal or AC signal which you are giving. Okay, so we may be giving a relatively weak signal when you sing the sound may be very weak but then when it passes through the amplifier the signal become, gains its power and then it gets amplified and you get the output from here. But then you can see that for an amplifier to work, it not only requires an input signal and an amplifier, but then it also requires an additional energy source. And it is this, using this energy source, it actually converts or it actually does the amplification activity. Okay, so for that, you have been, I have connected this amplifier to an additional um, source, energy source. So this battery actually provides the energy source to amplify the input signal and get the output uh, amplified output. Okay, so this is how or these are the basic elements which are required in an amplifier. That is, we require the input signal, we require an amplifier, then you require an additional energy source which actually helps in this amplification. Amplification, okay. Now, uh, normally, uh, the input, you know, it can be a microphone kind of thing, which is being uh, given as the input. Then in the amplifier part, you can have many uh, amplifiers or many active amplifying um, electronic devices. So you can say that it can be either an electron tube or you know now what is basically about transistors. You have learned about transistors. So transistors are best examples for um, amplifier, amplifiers because they do the amplification. Uh, no, so transistor is another example. Then you have the FET, field effect transistor. It's again another kind of transistor which you will learn. So FET is another device which does the amplification. Then you will learn about OPAMPs, operational amplifiers. They are also amplifiers. So for amplification to be done, there should be some kind of an active device. Okay, then as an energy source, you can give any uh, battery or any any kind of such um, 
DC energy source which is helpful for the amplifier to do the amplification. Okay. Now amplifiers also can be uh, basically called as uh, in two types. What is uh, one is a linear amplifier and other one is uh, non-linear amplifiers. Non-linear amplifiers. So linear amplifiers are those um, where the output is directly proportional to the input signal. So if you give a sine wave and you will get, if you are giving a sine wave as input and you get the output again a sine wave but an amplified sine wave then you can say it is a linear amplifier because the output what you get is basically very uh, directly proportional to the input signal but only is the only difference is that it is amplified but non-linear is that uh, we can say that the output will not be in the may not need not be in this form okay so in a non-linear amplifier the output is not instantaneously proportional to the input signal so these are this is non-linear amplifiers and uh, linear amplifiers so these are some basic ideas regarding an amplifier now uh, you are familiar with transistors and i hope you know that how the amplifier when connected in different modes of configuration it can act as amplifier so here i've shown a common emitter amplifier you know that transistors can be connected uh, in different modes common base common emitter and common collector configuration here you can see that i have connected the transistor in the common emitter mode emitter is common to both input and output so you will be giving the input signal in this uh, base emitter junction and then you will be getting the output across the uh, emitter uh, emitter is again common here so emitter collector junction so that uh, you get the input, you give the input and then the out, and you get the output. And you, you know that the voltage um, amplifies, is amplified and the current is amplified. And then you can see that the signal is inverted in the case of a common emitter amplifier. That if you give a signal and the, the your signal, output of the signal will be almost proportional. Uh, but the thing is it, it will be out of phase. That is it is almost 180 degree phase out so that is inverted signal so when it is high when it, here it is low when it is low or in the negative part you get a positive part but then it will be in the amplified form so this is the input and output of a common emitter amplifier and here is the circuit which you actually um, or you can say that um, the circuit uh, for giving the biasing and all other uh, requirements for the uh, common emitter amplification here you can uh, clearly see common emitter base junction and then collector emitter junction junction and you know that uh, for an amplifier or a amplifier in whatever mode it be it has to be biased properly right so this emitter base junction is uh, biased and you know that it is forward biased the input uh, part or the emitter base part should be forward biased here so this has been forward biased you know that this is npn transistor from the arrow you can understand this is an npn transistor so you can say that the base is p type so p is connected to p so that means it is forward biased okay then you have a resistance here uh, connected uh, rb then um, again uh, you see the output part that is collector emitter and you can see that npn so collector is actually n and that is n is connected to the p so that means emitter collector junction is actually reverse biased and you know that when the input part is forward biased and the other part is reverse biased that is the normal way um, uh, the transistor is connected for operating that in the active region right so operating a transistor in the active region requires forward biasing here and reverse biasing here okay now we can see the signal input signal is given here and um, you can uh, always have to make sure that the input signal um, whether it will change its polarity right a positive in the positive and negative half cycle it will change its polarity but reverse changing its polarity should not actually um, alter the reverse or forward biasing of the uh, transistor so the signal should be in such a way that the signal doesn't uh, hamper the uh, uh, forward biasing or the or the proper biasing of the transistor okay now this is signal uh, now you have you can see that 
there is a capacitor being given at the input side. So that is uh, the input signal which you give in is actually uh, passing through a capacitor C1 to the input base, right? So, and similarly from the output, you can see that you, you get the output waveform here or you can get the collect the output across C2 and this uh, emitter. And you can see that um, uh, before, even bef be just before connecting to the output, uh, uh, say load or output, uh, taking the output, you can see that there is another capacitor C2 here. And we call these capacitors basically as coupling capacitors. We call them as coupling capacitors and its main purpose is basically to um, actually filter out the DC part. You know that capacitor blocks the DC and it will allow the AC current to flow through. And this is basically an AC amplifier and you want to eliminate the DC um, component as much as possible. So here in the capacitor C1, when the input signal is given, so that in this DC bias will be um, Okay, actually uh, the DC will be blocked or it isolates the DC. So it, acts, it is capacitor C1 and C2 is acting like a switch that is it will be open switch, it will act as an open switch for DC um, signal and uh, it will act as a uh, closed switch for AC signal. So here also if from the input side it will isolate the DC bias and um, and from the output also, in the output also, there will be DC component, right? So that DC component can be blocked using the C2 capacitor and only the AC can be actually uh, finally being given to us or taken as the output or sometimes this output may be the input to the next uh, stage of amplifier. Normally in multi-stage amplifier, the output of one amplifier is given to the input of the next amplifier so that different stages of amplification will be done. So the output uh, will be um, actually passing through the C2, uh, thus blocking the um, DC and the AC signal, no, most of the AC or most of the DC will be blocked and you can uh, sure, assure that the AC signal is actually being given at or taken as the output or given to the second stage of the amplifier. Okay, so this is how a common emitter amplifier works. And you know um, that when you give a signal, the amplified output you get and that will be inverted. That means it will be out of phase in the case of a common emitter amplifier. Okay, now, uh, when we use an amplifier in the form as we have seen or a basic amplifier alone circuit, there are practically several difficulties. We know that amplifier, um, the gain can be increased or uh, you actually get a good gain from an amplifier, but there are certain practical difficulties when we consider. That is, uh, first thing is the gain most of the times will not be stable, instable gain. Or you can say gain is unstable, okay? That is, um, which means that you cannot guarantee a gain which is very stable always. So the gain may be uh, varying. Uh, sometimes you can see that uh, with the like uh, when the input voltage, uh, input supply, if there are some variations in the input supply, so that can affect the gain. Or sometimes if the temperature, you can see that the ambient temperature, if it changes, that can uh, affect the gain. So that means the gain may not be stable always. And the second thing is you know that when you use an amplifier, you are giving an AC signal. And suppose you are giving an AC signal, uh, say this, uh, let this be the frequency of the AC signal and you are expecting, so this is say gain, uh, let me call it as gain A and you can say that we normally expect the gain to be stable for a very large frequency, right? So very for a large, we can normally we say about the bandwidth and uh, that you will learn later, but then for a large range of frequency, we expect the gain to be uh, steady. But then most of the time uh, when we uh, use an amplifier alone, what happens is the uh, frequency response will be poor. That means the, uh, the bandwidth over which the frequency is steady or the gain is steady may not be uh, very large. It may be very small or a very small value only. Actually, 
the gain um, will be stable or gain you will have a, a, a constant gain that means bandwidth may be very very low so you you, you just have to understand that um, the gain may be unstable many times and then the frequency response will be very poor uh, or that is frequency response or then uh, the another thing is noise may be a big problem so noise if there are noises that also will get amplified or it may be a uh, uh, big problem to the output signal so noise also makes a, a, a kind of a difficult situation in the case of a normal amplifier so practically speaking uh, even though we ideally say that amplifies amplifies and the gain is very high or you can get a good amplified signal um, then there are certain practical difficulties when you handle an amplifier in a circuitry. So that means uh, basically an amplifier, uh, this such, such such practical difficulties has to be taken care when you implement the amplifier in an electronic circuit. So that, that means if you want to do any additional um, circuitry or if you can do anything in addition to the amplifier circuit, then... Uh, it may be possible for this uh, to avoid these practical difficulties. So such a thing is there and that is what we call as a feedback. And uh, that is uh, feedback is basically means that a part of the output signal, if you give, give a part of the output signal from the output of an amplifier to the input. So this is basically uh, fe feeding it back. That is output of a amplifier is a part of that is fed back to the input so that how it is being done and how the feedback is taking place and all you will understand to the, from the next sessions but then um, the just you have to keep in mind is that if you have an amplifier i can say that if you have an amplifier here a part of the amplifier output so you have the input given to the amplifier and get the output out of the amplifier a part of that is actually given back to the input a part of that is given back to the input and um, how you give back the input that also uh, matters and how you give back and anyway that we learn later but then uh, if you are giving a part of the output to the input side and this process we call as the feedback process or the system or the circuitry which actually does this uh, is called as the feedback system and uh, an amplifier which has a feedback circuitry along with the amplifier circuit, we call them as feedback amplifiers. Okay, so um, this is uh, so we can uh, clearly say that it is the feedback is the process of injecting some energy from the output back to the input. So this is known as the feedback. Now I'll discuss just uh, very briefly about two types of feedback, and we'll stop with that. So first one is a positive feedback. Okay, so in a for positive feedback, what it is it is being done is, uh, if the we said that the out, a part of the output is given to the input, right? And if the part of the output given to the input and this signal which is given to the input side, if it is in the same phase as that of the input signal, that is, if the input signal is like and a part of the output is fed back and that is also in same phase with the input signal, you can say that this is positive feedback okay so we can say that uh, if the feedback signal that is the feedback voltage or current if it is applied in such a way that it is in phase with the input signal so feedback signal we can say in phase with input we can call it as positive feedback and then obviously then what would be the negative feedback okay negative feedback is basically the feedback signal is given uh, in such a way that it is out of phase with the input signal so here the feedback signal will be out of phase okay 
with the input signal okay so that is uh, what is positive feedback and negative feedback and there may there are many uh, requirements when you need or uh, we can uh, we, later you will understand that which type of feedback is suitable for amplifiers and what is the actual principle behind uh, the feedback uh, amplifiers and how the feedback is done um, when we say that feed, we are feedbacking voltage or current how basically the feedback is done and all such things we'll be discussing later in the next session so uh, from this video you might have understood basically what an amplifier does and uh, a common emitter amplifier how it basically behave or what is the circuit and what are coupling capacitors and what are the basic elements required in the uh, common emitter amplifier circuit then you understood that what is the uh, limitation of a normal amplifier or other practi practical difficulties of a normal amplifier then you understood in order to rectify that practical difficulties you require a feedback system and what is basically a feedback means and what are the different types of on an, uh, on an average what are basically two there are basically two types of feedbacks and how these two feedback uh, actually differs so these are the um, basic concepts you might have got during uh, while watching this video so i hope you have un uh, understood and if you can uh, have any difficulties or if you have any comments or queries you can please post it thank you very much for your patient listening